Central African Republic. Getting the Central African Republic visa in Malabo, Equatorial Guinea, took two days and $85. Two months later, I would leave Bamako, Mali, and take Kenyan Airways to visit the country from May 8 to 12, 2017. To fasten it and click in the buckle like this, and adjust to fit. I pass the straps around your waist, clipping the fasteners at the front. On board, we got mixed nuts and champagne. I was excited because Central African Republic would be my 34th country in Africa. Transiting in Nairobi, I took a regional flight on an Embraer 190 aircraft. The airplane was en route to Bangui, Central African Republic via Entebbe, Uganda, because UN workers liked visiting Uganda on the weekend, then returned back to work in Bangui on the weekdays. On our pit stop in Entebbe, Uganda, we flew over Lake Victoria on final approach. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Entebbe. I wondered what I would experience in a war-torn nation. Kenyan Airways, once again, had exceptional service. Lunch was served. We crossed over jungles and rivers. This country had 4.5 million people and had a history of civil wars. Upon landing, I noticed the airport was surrounded by UN soldiers and pickups protecting the airport for our arrival. Outside on the tarmac, I saw World Food Program aircraft and Red Cross aircraft. Finally, we arrived in Bangui, and everyone disembarked the plane. Of course, the first thing I saw upon emergence from the terminal were UN vehicles. I left the airport and caught a ride with a fellow passenger into the city. Leaving the airport, I saw guys washing taxi cars as well as motorcycles. En route into the city, we passed large crowds. This was a Francophone nation, so they all spoke French, and their local language, Sangu. There were so many people everywhere crossing the road right in front of us. Then I saw a pickup truck with armed men standing in the back holding machine guns. Oops, I better hide my camera. These guys were protecting the peace, but they sure looked intimidating. My fellow passenger was from Burundi and came to work in Bangui for the UN. These motorcycles sure like swerving, passing, and taking risks on the road, like this guy. The roads were wide but had no center line markings, and nobody paid attention to the zebra stripes. Everything was so exciting for me, but at the same time I was afraid of the unknown. I had no idea where I would be sleeping that night. I was recommended to visit the Catholic Mission for a place to stay, which was nearby the stadium. Hey, thanks for, yeah. very much for the ride. Uh, okay. It was nice to meet you Okay. on the airplane from Burundi. You're going to be here for nine months. Yeah, my ninth month. Uh, okay, and you are from Central African Republic? Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, and your name? Uh, Firme. Firme. All right, nice to meet you. Okay. Thanks for the ride. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, bye-bye. Walking to the Catholic Mission, I met some locals selling food. I understood tomatoes, limes, okra, pepper, and greens. But what was this brown paste? I learned it was peanut butter called Arashid. Then I saw bugs being sold for food. But what kind of bugs were they? Here a sign read, don't touch guns because they could be explosives. This was Central African Republic. I arrived in Central African Republic and now I'm gonna go visit some places here. There's a deep hole here. Everywhere I traveled in the world, I would find random holes in the ground. You had to watch where you're walking to avoid falling in the ground. Searching for the embassy of DRC now and to my Ede. Merci. Como te apel tu? My name is Mr. Van der Bakazele Fabrice. Wow, it's long. <laughs> After getting my DRC visa, I went to search for the Cathedral de Notre Dame. I passed by the marketplace where everybody was selling clothes. Then finally, I found the cathedral with some gift vendors out front. This guy decided to be funny. I found this church over here. It's a Roman Catholic church. It's Cathedral Notre Dame de l'Immaculate Concepcion. There's also another side church over in this direction. It's an interesting area of town. How are you? I don't smoke. Sorry. This kid was about 14 years old and was already smoking. There's UN vehicles everywhere I look around here. These mangoes were for cars passing by. On the right side of the cathedral was an outdoor area for praying with benches lined up. Inside the cathedral, some boys were gathered in the front. Here were the confession booths and then a portrait of Pope Francis's visit in November 2015. Besides Pope Francis, Pope Paul John II visited this country in 1985. His cathedral was built in 1930 and his floors were made out of bricks. Now the boys went up to pray. <laughs> Meanwhile, outside, a pickup full of UN armed soldiers 
older stopped by the mango vendor to buy some mangoes for lunch. So I made it here to the church and I met John and he was looking for a piano because he wants to practice it. So he finally found his electronic piano right here. But the problem is, is that it needs to be plugged in. <laughs> of course, yeah. And the plug is missing. So you're waiting for your friend. So you have a concert that you're preparing for? Yes, of course. In two weeks. Well, nice to meet you, John. Thank you to yeah. Jason. Yeah. I asked John if I could stay at his family's home, and after asking his parents, he said it was okay. Here's the cyber cafe. We're having problems finding electricity here in Bangui. So we're moving rooms. Even though this guy was blind, he didn't want me taking any videos of them singing. music practice was over and we all headed home. We left the cathedral and went to look for a motorcycle ride to John's home. Day 2, Tuesday. John's family is who would host me during my week's stay in Bangui. I spent the night at John's family and then the next day we walked through his neighborhood back to the main road. I woke up now, we're gonna walk into town, find the street and then take a bus. You're going to school and I'm gonna go visit Wali. It had rained at night, so there were many puddles to navigate around. People were surprised to see me walking through their neighborhood, and they asked John, where did he find me? People ask, where I find you? Oh. <laughs> but it's a surprise for them to see the white persons in their quarter. The times people don't want to be taken. While waiting for the taxi, I saw guys pushing carts with long sticks on it. I saw bowls of brown powder and wondered if it was coffee. This was the market, a place with a thousand eyes on you. I had to be careful from someone getting upset about seeing my camera. Locals love slicing these leaves to make them look like grass and then cooked with them. Here was another lady slicing leaves to make them look like cut grass. Then it was time to catch my taxi ride to Wally. But was there even room for me? Don't worry, they would make room. I got the front seat, but I didn't expect to find feet dangling next to my head from the roof. Every day was a new experience here. I guess they privileged me by giving me the front seat. I don't think I could accept sitting on the roof and paying for it. I would rather hitchhike before I would pay to sit on the top of a taxi roof. This country was one of the rare countries where hitchhiking was safer than taking public transportation. We drove through villages and saw all kinds of interesting things, like this truck that was overloaded. Not only was it me in the front seat, but also a mother and her child. Along the way, I saw a bitter cola nut being sold. To accommodate more passengers, the driver put boards on top of the, his roof to allow passengers to sit down. You had to be thankful for this type of transportation, otherwise you would be walking along the road like these guys. So we're busy going along the road and we broke down now. Our car is so full, it's not full until it's overloaded. We just have to fix the car before we can continue. I'm not sure if we'll manage, but hopefully we will. Sometimes they don't like you to film, so it's hard to do this. They fixed the minor maintenance issue, so it was time to climb back onto the car. We'll continue now. All right. <laughs> Mercy. We're back to the brim now. <laughs> You can't get any more people on. <laughs> and the way we continued on our journey to Bwali. Wow, I couldn't believe my eyes. But this was Central African Republic. People even hung to the back of the car as if it were a truck. Meanwhile, 
Our vision was obscured by the legs dangling over the windshield, but this was normal everyday business for my taxi driver. We came across this town that had so many butterflies. Then we came across a UN vehicle protecting a shipment of bagged water that a truck carrying it had tipped over and crashed going too fast around the corner. Arriving in Boali, I asked a ride from a UN pickup and they gave me a ride to the waterfall. There's so many butterflies here. Just looking on the ground, you can see hundreds and thousands of them. And we're going to find the waterfall here in Wali. You can stay at the hotel and then there's also a way to go down the stairs to see the bottom of the waterfall. My guide's taking me there right now. The UN people were surprised to see me here. They said no tourists come here. It's the worst country to visit. <laughs> Important for right. Here was the first stop on the way to the bottom of the waterfall. You have to scale these rocks to get down there. Bottom of the waterfall. It's pretty immense. They got a little hydroelectric dam over here. I'm gonna search for some mangoes. I lay poor shishi de mang. You see, okay. These were the toys and games of village kids, playing with tires or anything that had a wheel. Two manj la mang avec la fil. No problem. No problem. Oh really? I was surprised they ate the mango skin. Apparently it was okay. The trees here are really big. Just looking at the trunk of this one, it's really huge. And these two. Here is another kid playing with his makeshift toy that his parents made for him. I saw a vendor selling taro powder and then the bees just loved it. They just love whatever this is. Here was a village store beside the road. That was the end of that tour. I visited this small town. I'm just gonna walk up this road, try to get a ride back to Bangi. All the little kids like to follow me around. Check to see what's happening, right? Come to appel too. Wow, it's so difficult names. <laughs> so you're curious about me why I'm here, yeah? <laughs> I'm just gonna walk up the road and uh, try to find a taxi. All right, merci beaucoup. It's very green here. It's the rainy season too. These people were selling some roasted peanuts in front of their shop. Then I saw some villagers. Hey guys, pigs. Let's go check out the pigs and the piglets. Hey piggies. Ah, oh, you guys are scared. Here I found some villagers brewing their own alcohol. Hi, how are you? Jason. Okay, Sava. What is this? Oh, okay. It's kind of like a millet. I like your hair. Como tu fais, Sasa? Okay, c'est bon. <laughs> this school seems to be functioning. Like Cole, Jardin, the Zanfang, the Boali shoots. They got the classroom here, the canteen, the bureau, and the toilet. That's the four rooms that they have. Even little children will carry things on their head. We're walking through some fields here with my little tour guide. He doesn't speak any English, but he knows a little French and Sangu. People here are called Central Africans. As long as you're in a safe area, it's okay here. You got flies around your head too. These flies just like to keep on following us. But I found out that his parents are dead of it, just him. He must be an orphan then. So I got a ride with these people in the back of a pickup truck. They're carrying a bunch of rocks. Back on the main road, I saw more pickups loaded to the brim. And it looked like the left side was heavier. They sure knew how to maximize space, especially with using those boards and having people dangling from the ends. This guy was so relaxed, he was even on his phone. Wait, how many people are on this pickup? There were at least 25 people on this one, even sitting underneath the people. Just another day in Central African Republic. And then there was the motorcycles. How could they overload a motorcycle, I wondered. Finally, I caught a ride back to Bangi in this pickup truck. Oh, how hitchhiking was so much more comfortable than the local taxi. I'm picking up some carbon. It's a good deal over here. Here were the local mango vendors. There was that funny hairstyle again. Finally, I made it back into town. This was a local outdoor restaurant. This was how you ate. Pinched a chunk of gozo mashed it into a ball, and dipped it into the sauce. 
This child vendor was selling samosas to the children playing PlayStation. I guess they even had child entrepreneurs. You had to start somewhere. My phone was dead, so I asked the local vendor to charge my phone. Then I saw a clothing auction happening. All those clothing donations from western countries came here and then these guys sold them. They sure gathered a crowd with all their auctioning. Back at home, I met John and siblings studying and doing their homework under a dim light. Schoolwork, je vois, the light is so low, <laughs> you can't see nothing here. On day three, I visited downtown Bungie. This was one of the local cafes in downtown. Surprised to see you again in town. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Me also, I'm surprised. You're going to university right yeah, now? Yeah, I'm going back. I'm going to look for some documents. Okay, well, I'll see you around. Yeah. <laughs> I went to the internet cafe to try to book my flight ticket. Internet was so slow that it took me one hour to get to the payment page and then the electricity went out. I felt like I would be stuck in this country. This was the post office where they sold postcards. And then I got in trouble for taking a picture of this structure in downtown. Ah, uh, okay. On leave a message to the book Yeah, okay. On leave. Yeah. I was always getting in trouble in Africa. I wanted to go to Mbaiki, so I caught a ride with this guy across town. Mbaiki, c'est là, la rivière. These people all lined up to get their vaccinations. This guy was getting ready for his shot. First, they disinfected the area. Then they jabbed the needle in and squeezed the syringe. This guy took it easy and remained calm. I skipped Mbaiki and remained in Bangi all day long. I love the way they shook hands in Central African Republic. They always snap the fingers as they shook hands. Day 4, Thursday, my trip to Mbaiki. The road was wide open this morning, and the UN soldiers were making their morning patrol. <laughs> Another muddy day, but everybody had to get to work. This cart was way overloaded, but the boards had to be transported somehow. That guy had a hard time pushing that cart. I walked across the bridge to start my journey to Mbaiki. There goes someone pointing at my camera. My two options for transportation was either to take a taxi like this one and sit in the front seat with no view and 20 people on top of me and even have the possibility of breaking down in the middle of the jungles or hitchhike in a private car with the whole seat to myself the choice was quite simple there were two pedestrians whoa what are they carrying on their heads? Every taxi that passed us was overloaded. And then there was always the random car that broke down in the middle of the road. My driver arrived at his destination of Bisoso. These guys were trying to fix their old car that broke down too. Pumping up the tire with air the old fashioned way, like a bicycle. Nearby I saw people drying white powder. What was it? This is cassava root. And you have to peel it like this. And then once you flip it, you're gonna put it in a machine. Like this one that ground up the cassava and made moist powder to dry in the sun. It makes powder like this. These were the mats upon which they dried the cassava. Some tarps were set up right next to the roadside. Everyone's so curious about me. <laughs> I was a local attraction, it seemed. Qu'est-ce que tu vas faire maintenant? Moi, ça veut dire que je vais travailler. Carrying pots on your head here was common. Everyone did it. 
Here comes another fully loaded taxi. Was this guy pointing to me? Definitely this guy was pointing. Here's a farm for palm oil. They're searching for palm oil and manufacturing it here. My first ride dropped me off here in Basongo. I have to wait for another ride. Hopefully I get one. I hope to get to Baiki where I'll visit the cathedral, the monastery, and possibly the university. I went to visit the palm oil plant. These were the barrels where they heated up the palm kernels. The workers welcomed me in and showed me how it was done. Here we had a bucket of palm kernels. Here, it's really hot. So they're getting oil from it and it's all gonna go and be sold at the marketplace. This is how you do it in the Central African Republic. Merci pour la tour. Uh-huh. C'est bien. Uh-huh. This is how the knot looks like when it first starts out. Tu ne sais pas pourquoi je viens ici. Tu détestes ton pays? Ouais, je déteste mon pays parce que tu vois, je travaille pas si comme ça, mais toi tu travailles, alors je préfère aller à l'extérieur pour que je puisse savoir. Je travaille, je travaille pour la société, mais. Ouais. Yeah. <laughs> tu habites ici, tu les vis? Ouais. Yeah. Parfois j'étais à Bangui, mais pour la présent, tu vois, je fréquente même pas, donc je suis venu visiter mes parents, mes frères. Quel pays tu voudrais aller? Je préfère aller en Amérique. <laughs> Here a motorcycle passed by loaded with a bunch of water jugs and the passenger on top. Sitting on top of the truck wasn't any problem here either. Here comes another overloaded van. This guy even clung to the back of the van, holding on for his dear life. What do you want to do now? I'm going to go to the house. Ah, the house. Yes, I'm going to go to the house. Yes, I'm going to go to the house. Let's check out this taxi. It looks pretty full. The wheels are even wobbling on both sides. Let's hope he's a careful driver. Then I wanted to get a group photo with the villagers, but they were not too enthusiastic about it. And then I got a ride in the truck. Oh boy, what happened here? I think their taxi broke down. I'm glad I didn't choose this transport. The truck dropped me off at a checkpoint where the guards wanted the bribe. But luckily this car came along and picked me up, so I asked the guards if I could leave, and they said yes. I got so much amusement from watching the other cars. This car didn't even have a windshield screen. This fan broke down. Or did it run out of gas? Well, I guess they fixed it. Here it comes. Ever so slowly through the platfold lined road. You didn't want the passengers to fall off. Here we have the Cathedral of Joan of Arc in Mbaiki. There goes that green van again. Wow, it's barely moving. I'm surprised nobody is pushing it. You can even see someone on the other side walking as fast as the van is driving. I decided to take three rides to get here to Mbaiki. I got uh, to meet some people and I'm gonna visit this cathedral. As I approached the entrance, I saw some stray goats roaming. When they saw me, they ran off. The stained window glass was impressive for this part of the world. This was the back, and this was the front. Oh, what is this? I think the goats were here. That's a pretty nice church. Not many people come to visit church in Africa, but that's what I'm doing these days in different countries. This is a safe area of the uh, country to visit, so I haven't had any problems, except the control people wanted to charge me 2000 which is about $4 pass through but I told them I was hitchhiking so I didn't have money for them. This is the Cathedral of Mbaiki. It's usually about two hours away from Bangui. So now we're trying to get mangoes from this tree. We got a big stick and he's gonna go shake the tree with a stick. Here looks like a good mango up there. <laughs> They're just loving the mangoes here. C'est bon le mang? So now it's time to eat mangoes. We're just trying to catch them. Everyone's working on them, even the little kiddos. They got a kid up there, and then they're catching them here below to put them in the basket. This mango is so close to the ground, I can just pick it. <laughs> wow, I got a whole crowd here. <laughs> Maybe I'll try your mango. Hey, thanks, guys. Very good mango. Everyone's selling mangoes around here. Bonjour, uh, combien pour le mango? Le cinq fou. Vingt cinq? For one or two? Mm. One. So for six. Ah, six. Six. Six for one cinq.
I jumped in a Medicine Sans Frontier Land Cruiser, and he drove me across town to find a university. Here was another Land Cruiser getting a car wash in the river. Some cars drove so fast on country roads you had to jump off the road just to give them space. That wasn't too safe driving, I thought, with all the pedestrians on each side of the road. I'm so surprised that you can just balance this on your head. So I made it to the University of Bangui. So I'm gonna go check out this university. Say one. Merci pour ton aide. Okay, 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 pas okay. mal. <laughs> to go to this university, you have to go through the forest. Here it is, the university called ISDR. So these buildings are spread out over this campus, which is not that big actually, but it uh, looks like the dormitory is down that way. There's no one here though. This was one of the teachers' homes, so I went to knock on the door. So right now there's vacation? Oui, for uh, one week. Yeah. What's the vacation? It's time for registration. Ah, oh, registration. You get your registration in uh, scholarity. You say there's 40 teachers and how many students? Uh, 120. And when was the school built? 1968. Oh, so many years. Uh, so many years, yeah. You live here too, yeah? Oui, it's my house. I was able to meet Joel here. He's one of the 40 teachers that works here. What is the problem in Central Africa? Problem in Central Africa is a political problem. People want to change by the level of election. Mm -hmm. The election not in a right. And few days after the election, the government was uh, contested by mm. the population. Okay. It's a great problem. But Baiki was always safe? No armed forces. Uh, no armed forces. In, in, in Baiki. No. It's uh, so quiet. Okay. For an instance. Mm -hmm. But we don't know. But so far it's been okay. So, yeah. sorry we didn't have enough time to discuss, but um, it's 3 o'clock and I need to go back to Bangui. <laughs> Alright, well, thanks a lot okay. for the information. Okay. Uh, thank you to yeah. meet you. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I hope that you come back again. Yeah, to I will. With us. I'll let right. you know. Okay. Thank you. We'll keep in touch. Well, I met Joel and he's a professor here since 1991. It's getting a little late. It's 3 o'clock and it takes about two hours to get there. So, um, depending on hitchhiking rides and whatnot, so we'll see how that goes. The first hitchhiking ride was on a motorcycle to the main road. There were four people on this motorcycle. Do you see the little baby's head sandwiched between the driver and the passenger? My next ride was more roomy with only me as the passenger. My next ride was on the back of a pickup truck with a bunch of passengers who didn't like the video camera. Qu'est-ce que c'est? Là, c'est du légume. Légume? Cuit. Ah, c'est bon. C'est bon pour manger. Oh, oui. We drove through villages like this one. Now we're waiting for the next ride. We had to stop here for a little party. We'll continue soon. <laughs> hey, I said my president is Toadela. Ah, uh, and mine? Uh, your president is um, Donald Trump. Yeah. <laughs> Donald Trump. <laughs> I gave up on local style hitchhiking and chose a private pickup truck instead. But then with this pickup truck, we first ran out of gas. But luckily our driver carried a spare jerry can. Next, our tire would break. Now our tire broke so we had to fix it. Okay, right here on the road. Everyone had to drive around us, including this big semi truck. The steering mechanism broke so they wanted to fix it by using a torn shirt fabric to wrap around the axle followed by some rubber straps. The fabric shirt wasn't strong enough so they sent someone to get rubber straps to bind this together. Back in town, I waited at the bread shop for my host John to meet me. One of John's neighbors invited us for dinner, but with no electricity, we had to have a candlelit dinner. We got bread, we got bozo, we have vegetables. Yes. What is this thing? It's special to Central African? Yes. Where is it made from? From cassava, according to Sango Gozo. Alright, mm -hmm. interesting. Day 5. My shoes are really dirty from the mud, so one of John's little brothers cleaned them for me. See you later guys. Thanks a lot. Nice to meet you. <laughs> and off we went for my last day in Bangui. I love this hairstyle. We walked through the school grounds on our way through the main road. In the morning, the school kids would pray in front of the altar. Thanks a lot for the shirt. <laughs> yeah, I like it. For nothing, Jason. So I'll remember you now. <laughs> okay, no problem. You can tell to your parents that there is somebody who with them yeah. in Bangui, Central Africa. Yeah. All right. We took a motorcycle taxi into town with me on the back. One of the most dangerous forms of transportation, but the most prevalent in this African country. This place on the left was the National Assembly. Again, here was another UN vehicle moving through town. 
and this beefed up armored vehicle. Here was the expensive 5 star hotel called Ledger where diplomats stayed while visiting. Everyone wondered why I didn't stay there. I got some scenes from downtown but then people started causing trouble and asking me why I was taking photos. So I stopped. There's five dangerous areas in Central African Republic. Boats, Bomo, Birao, Dele, Nana, Grezibi, and Babari. You can't take a bus from Bangui to Chad because here at the border it's dangerous. You see, you say the American soldiers? Joseph Kony. Ah, Joseph Kony. Joseph Kony. Joseph Kony was the leader of the Lord's Resistance Army, a guerrilla group that formerly operated in Uganda. You see, say, Sekur. Sekur. At the stadium, people used it as a place to jog. I bet some were athletes practicing for the Olympics. There was a bar resto at the stadium, so I went up to sit and observe the traffic. There were UN trucks, UN pickups, then there was the armed UN pickups with soldiers sitting in the back. Motorcyclists rode right next to them, and then the police pickup let their workers sit on the back of the pickup with their feet dangling off the side. Here was an armored vehicle and then an ambulance. The UN police was colored red and white. Then I saw a truck with German written on it. Edeka was a German supermarket. How I wished I was in Germany right now. Oh, what was this? An armored vehicle with machine guns on top. Here was the president's billboard. Here were some patriotic billboards. It's me, it's you, it's us. I should have stopped here at this sign when I arrived, but now I was leaving, so I had to pretend. Here I arrived in Bangui, yes. in the Central African Republic. Yes. All right, merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Well, what is your car? Huh? I didn't know why, but black people automatically thought white people drove in cars, so that's why this guy was asking. I was just on foot to the airport. This was the airport business lounge in Bangui. Then it was time to check in. For my ladies and gentlemen, the Pilotic Air Captain speaking. My name is uh, Eric Kurgat. Outside, I saw UN aircraft and World Food Program aircraft, and then this funny-looking Antonov 74. We finally took off, and that was the end of my five-day trip to Central African Republic. It was Friday, and the UN employees were taking their weekend vacation to Entebbe, Uganda. We passed over rivers and jungles of Congo. On behalf of Kenya Airways, as Captain Personals, Captain Eric and the Tap Robot, we'd like to thank you for choosing to fly with us and making us the pride of Africa. Arriving to Entebbe International Airport, and the rare week when all the lake flies would hatch. Outside on the tarmac, you could see thousands of lake flies. There were so many, it looked like snow. I arrived here in Entebbe. <laughs> Sheila and your friend Ken came to pick me up. So I'm Ken. Yeah, I'm Jason. Jason. All nice right. meeting you. So you're a real Ugandan? Yeah, I'm really. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more adventures.